Hi, um, so I've got Brenda Hurley here. Brenda exhibited at Queen's Park Art Centre recently. So we're just going to chat a bit today about Brenda and her work and her background. So to sort of start off, if you could just tell us a bit about yourself, Brenda, and your career and background as an artist. My um, background started when I was 15 and I went to a junior art college in Bradford in Yorkshire. I'd always wanted to paint, but unfortunately, I couldn't afford to just be an artist. I had to learn a skill. So I decided to do dress design. Mm -hmm. And so I started off in, in dress design. And when I left college, after two years in the workplace, I decided that I would start my own business up, which I did. And that was called Flareware Limited. And it was a small manufacturing unit. Mm -hmm. I eventually uh, employed about 16 girls up to, I think I was about 30 something when my husband uh, informed me that he'd been moved to London. And so my parents took over the business and I came down to Berkhamsted with my children. And once my children started school, I decided I would pursue the painting, which I'd always wanted to do. And so I, in fact, went to St Albans Art College for two years part time. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to the Wickham College, the, which is a university now, for a, a three year course doing a BHDAD. And that sort of set me off in the right direction to, to paint and to exhibit. Great. And so the sort of paintings that we had at your exhibition are sort of wonderfully colourful. So do you think that's something in how your sort of background started off in fashion? Do you think that maybe sort of influenced in terms of using sort of colour and sort of bright pattern? Is that something that that you find in, in your paintings you sort of maybe look back to when you were in fashion at all? Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, uh, as I was trained um, at the college, we were encouraged to use inks because yeah. they were the closest things to dye that you would get in a production of, you know, printed fabric. Yeah. And so I've always used intense colour. Mm -hmm. But I would say also pattern is important to me. Um, I see pattern quite readily. Mm -hmm. And it's a combination, I think, of seeing something and wanting to make it your own. Yeah. So where do you sort of find inspiration for your art, artwork then? I just, well, I love landscape. Um, yeah. I, it's not just landscape, but I, I mean, I love landscape. I love still life. I love life uh, drawing. Um, and what I found was that, you know, that I, I will do sketches or I will take yeah. photographs mm -hmm. and I'll use the photographs as a starting point, but I never use them fully. Um, because I think if you do, you can often get bound up in trying to produce what you're seeing in a photograph. Yeah. So, so for me, I, I will do a sketch, I will take a photograph, and then I will kind of select what it was in that sketch, in that photograph that really drew me to, to, to wanting to do, to take the photograph, if you see what I mean. Yeah. And then from that, I would do some preparation sketches sometimes sometimes I just go straight in and paint mm -hmm. but I find that I all see color at a much heightened resolution yeah um than s somebody else would so so that's my starting point mm -hmm. it's really important for me to I just enjoy the pattern in in the landscape mm -hmm. I love seeing um all the different greens that you get in the fields I love the tracks. I love the, where, the, where the tractor's been. I love what I think of as forgotten footsteps, you know, all those people that walked the cattle years and years ago. And so it's kind of a history mm -hmm. as well as pattern that I want to bring to life in my paintings. And as you say, it's actually sort of seeing patterns in the landscape, you know, and I, I think that really sort of comes through in, in, your, in your artwork, you know, to see the landscape with as you say, like the vivid colours and creating patterns and tracks from that. I just think that's, I think that's um, really inspiring. So do you, sort of over the years, have you had any sort of like particular influences in terms of any sort of particular artists or? I'm influenced by all sorts of artists and they're all, all quite different. Mm. Um, so 
Barbara Ray, who was a Scottish artist, yeah. whose work is really quite abstract, but very, very brightly coloured. Caravaggio, because of the drama in his work. Van Gogh, I love, because of the rhythms in his work. There's some wonderful movement mm -hmm. in his work. So there's a quite a collection of people, actually, that have influenced me over the years. Uh, Picasso, yeah. So in terms of your background or associations that you have with um, Queen's Park Art Centre, um, mm. are you able to tell us a bit about that? Because I know that you sort of were previously a, a weekly tutor and, and ran workshops there. So it'd be good to um, hear some more about that, if possible. Yeah. Well, I've always loved Queen's Park Art Centre, mm -hmm. basically because it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for people with or without skills to go and try things out. Exactly. Um, and after I'd finished my um, course at um, Wickham um, College, mm -hmm. I decided to come along and, well, actually before that, even before that, I used to come for the life classes on a, on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, and also on a Monday, all day Monday. So I, I sort of knew Queen's Park before I left the college. When I left the college, I came and I was having a bit of a struggle um, settling down to work at home in a, in a small studio on my own. And I decided that I would come into the Thursday morning painting session just to get a bit of company and just to get a, away from my, my rather dull room. <laughs> and uh, funnily enough, the lady who was taking, who was the tutor then, she was about to leave. And I'd only, I'd only been in, the, in the, the room about an hour and a half. And she sort of stood behind me and she said, uh, oh, you know what you're doing. So I said, yes, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I do. She said, well, I'm leaving in, in about three weeks. Do you want to take over? <laughs> I was absolutely astonished. Uh, but that's what happened. And I did take over. And so I ran the um, acrylic um, uh, painting mm -hmm. workshops. I'm trying to think how long it, it's been, but I've been going to Queen's Park for over 30 years. And uh, so a great deal of that time, it has been spent either tutoring on the Thursday morning, or I've been running workshops at weekends, or just the odd life class that I've, uh, I've tutored as well. So it's been... Um, uh, Queen's Park's been part of my life for a long time. Oh, that's great to hear. And, and as you say, um, you know, the, the fact that somewhere like Queen's Park Art Centre gives sort of gives people to that chance to sort of engage in a creative activity or, as you say, just to try something out if they want to have a go. So how sort of important do you think it is that people are able to sort of engage in creative activities for sort of well-being and a bit of escapism especially sort of considering everything that we've all been through over the past year yeah well I, I think it is important I mean I as you probably know I, I've written a book and I'm just about ready to to, to have my second one published mm -hmm. and it, it was really through seeing um uh, Claire Steele and her writing workshops that kind of gave me a little bit of a push in that direction mm -hmm. um, and that's Queen's Park it's there and it's it's um, immediate you you don't have to book uh, a whole half year or a term or whatever mm -hmm. you can you can you know the times people have sort of said to me oh well I've only done painting you know at school and I've done an A level and I haven't done anything since and whatever. And, and they come along uh, and they suddenly find actually they get bitten by the bug and they want to carry mm. it. And I think that's really, really essential. Um, you know, whether you have a go at pottery or jewellery making mm -hmm. or even belly dancing, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Uh, it was, it, well, exactly, it was all available, you know, yeah. and the tutors in generally are what I call hands-on people people that you know have been doing it a long time and know the ropes and so they're able to pass their skills on to other people yeah which for me is that that was the big criteria in my class on the Thursday morning was that I was able to develop um, a, a structure so that the people in my in my group 
were able to attain a level that they didn't think they were going to be able to get to. Mm -hmm. And they have. And that's wonderful. Absolutely. It really is. And, and I think you've, uh, you've definitely inspired people to, um, to hopefully come along and, and find out a bit more about Queen's Park and sign up. And as you say, just have a go and have a go at something because you know, even if you don't think that you're, uh, you have the skills, you know, it's, it's something that with the right encouragement, you can get there in the end. Absolutely. And one of the other things, I mean, there used to be a wonderful um, sewing class and machine embroidery and quilting and things like that. I mean, they are so good because these are classes where you can sit and natter and be, you know, part of a bigger, exactly. bigger group. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's um, there's there's so much an offer there for, for people to um, for people to go and, and, and have a go at. Well, I would recommend it absolutely to everybody. Go and have a go. <laughs> That's excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you.